Welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a quick review of some heated clothing. So I've wanted this for quite a while. Um, I don't do a massive amount of winter riding because I tend to get quite cold. As I've got a naked bike there's quite a lot of wind on me and I've never had overly good winter gear so I've usually ridden mostly in the summer. But on a, a nice day like today when um, it's pretty cold but there's no wind and there's no rain it's quite nice to go out and, uh, and get a ride going. I first looked at some of the branded gear um, like Gerbing or I don't know if it's branded Keys or Kai's uh, or Warm and Safe but to get a, a decent jacket with the required connectors and whatnot you'd be looking at about sort of 150 200 pounds. The nice thing is once you've bought into that ecosystem you can then connect things like gloves, um, trousers and jacket all together and you can plug it into the bike. So before splashing out a few hundred quid, um, I thought I'll take a look online and um, get some of the cheaper equipment available and just see what it's like. Uh, it might be that I don't like heated clothing, it might be that they're not any good, or it might be that I don't need to spend more money at all, I don't know. So hopefully we'll find a little bit out today. So, the equipment that I bought, you can get from eBay, but if you want to get it a little bit cheaper, you can import it directly from China, um, from the e-commerce platforms. So I tend to use AliExpress. You can possibly get the same on Pindodo or um, Taobao or something like that, uh, but I tend to use AliExpress. Okay, so if I just search for heated vest, you can see that you're fairly spoiled for choice. I didn't find many jackets with heated sleeves on there. Um, and you've got different numbers of um, heating areas um, and it's slightly different prices but they're all around the sort of the 20 to 30 dollar range so this was the one that I purchased so I spent 26 dollars and 69 pence including tax and shipping so it says it's got 11 heating areas um, I got a large um, I usually take a, a medium in the UK um, but the Chinese sizes tend to run a little bit smaller So there it is, um, let's take a look at it. So here's the jacket, if you want it within sort of a week or, or something like that, um, I'd recommend looking for the same product on eBay and you might end up spending sort of a couple of pounds more but they'll be um, shipped directly from somewhere in the UK. So to take a look at some of the details, uh, you've got two buttons here, you've got a back and a belly, so you've got separate heat controls from the front and the back of it. Um, you've got this sort of, um, it almost looks like a, it looks almost like a down type of jacket. Uh, I'm not sure what the actual material is in there. Zip feels a bit flimsy, but um, hopefully it'll do the job. It's not a YKK or anything like that. Um, and inside you've got this reflective stuff with, uh, with like a mesh on it. Some instructions on here. You've got this little pocket, and that's where your power goes into. So this jacket doesn't come with any power source, um, but it is USB powered. So what I plan to do is use a power bank so this one is a 16,000 milliamp hour power bank fairly heavy quite an old one so I'll put that on I'll see how long it lasts as well um, but the idea is that that goes into the pocket and you plug this into one of the power sources fairly snug on me just got a couple of pockets there as well the large fits me quite well I'm about 182 centimeters 72 kilograms Okay, so they both turn on independently and you can scroll through blue being the coldest red being the warmest and white being somewhere in the middle so my test method what am i going to do well so today the temperature is seven degrees um, with a high of eight a low of one and it feels like three degrees so yeah, current temperature is 6 degrees, 2% chance of rain, feels like 3 degrees. Um, there's a 13 km an hour wind. Um, and it's only going to get cooler as we go into the evening. So that's a relatively cool day, for me anyway. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off, I'm going to put my other gear on, I'm going to go out for a ride, get a little bit cold, then I'm going to put this on and turn it on and see whether that warms me up adequately. Um, that was the best way I could think of to have a bit of a control so you'd know how cold I'd be without this. I don't know. I'll be wearing my um, Gore-Tex jacket with a liner in it, the Heli Hansen base layer, similar trousers, just buff around my neck, maybe a balaclava on and just some cheap worn out gloves okay so yeah i'll have a go at that um 
see what happens because I'm getting a bit warm in the house now. So uh, let's go for a ride. I'm just mid edit here and um, all of my riding footage looked like this. So something's up with my GoPro, I guess, has only got like a few seconds of clips. Unfortunately, I don't have any nice um, sort of riding footage to make the video more interesting, but it didn't actually add to or take away from the review itself. So um, yeah, maybe next time. Okay, I'm now um, in this sort of Blair Witch setting. Um, quite cold, the core's getting quite cold. Um, my hands are quite cold, so I'll stick my jacket on. I'm up on the hills now, so um, it's probably about three, three to four degrees. Um, I'll stick the jacket on, ride again, get up to speed, and um, let's see see what difference it makes. Okay, home. Um, quick coffee, and then um, I'll tell you my thoughts. So what did I think? Well, a um, couple of ob observations. First one, you'll see that these um, lights are now white rather than red. So um, clearly it's got some sort of a timing feature which makes the, uh, the temperature go down with time. I'm not sure exactly how long that takes. Um, so and I'm not sure whether this is gonna go down to the blue setting as well. When I got home, I left my jacket on uh, just on my kitchen table. So it's probably been about four or five hours um, so I don't know how long it'll last in total, it'll depend on your battery bank. But interestingly, it hasn't dropped down to um, either the medium or the cold level. So I'm guessing that it turned down during the ride due to some sort of a thermal switch or thermal cutout, which is probably a nice little safety feature to have. Um, yeah, I don't have any details of that and there weren't any on the product description. Uh, maybe I'll give them a message just to see whether I can find out what caused that. Before I put it on, um, I was getting quite cold. I was riding it around, I rode it up onto the top of the hills where it's always a few degrees cooler and I guess it was around three or four degrees at the top there. By that time, my sort of core and my chest was getting quite cold. After putting this on, that didn't really happen again. I noticed when I got up to speed, sort of 60, 70 miles per hour, um, I was starting to cool down again. I could just feel the wind starting to cool me, but I still wasn't cold. Um, and then when I slowed down again, or and especially when I stopped into traffic, the jacket then heated me back up again, which wouldn't normally happen if I didn't have a heated piece of clothing on. My hands were still quite cold. Some people say if you heat up your core, that makes your extremities stay warm as well. I didn't find that. Maybe I need to just get a better pair of gloves, I'm not sure. The zip got stuck at one point um, because it got a little bit of fabric stuck inside of it. So um, hopefully that, that will stand the test of time. And the jacket's pretty comfy. No complaints there about overall comfort levels. And there's a nice little bit of warmth around the neck. It feels quite even on the front and the back really. Probably slightly warmer on the front if I had to guess, but you have got independent controls if you need that. So overall, would I recommend it? Well, for 20 pounds, Yes, definitely. I think it's a really handy piece of clothing to have. If you just want to go for a quick ride out in the winter, um, I think this will help you out. Also quite good for commuting and you can use it off the bike as well if you ever want to sort of go walking with your, with this underneath your jacket. If you wanted to um, well, go out on a day like this and sit on a motorway for three hours, you're probably still going to get quite cold, I would have thought. Um, unless you've got a windscreen. So I think for sort of serious tourers or um, long distance commuters, you probably want something a little bit more substantial than this. You may also want to find something that can plug into the bike. It's possible you could get a, a USB adapter. I'm not sure, I haven't looked into that side of things. So I think in, in summary for 20 pounds, you can't go far wrong with this. It's probably the cheapest way that you can stay warm on a bike. Uh, my jacket cost a lot more than that. And um, even things like this base layer was probably more than £20, so you can't go far wrong with it. Um, I could see myself using this throughout winter, but also um, it would be the sort of thing that I'd take with me in the summer if I thought I was going to be riding back at night sort of thing when, um, uh, when the temperatures drop, because usually I don't wear my Gore-Tex jacket in the summer, I wear a leather jacket, which can get a little bit cool. So yeah, hopefully it'll stand the test of time, and uh, yeah, I expect I'll use it fairly regularly. <laughs>